match. Oh my goodness, maybe it's time to pull out my summer color. Ignore that. Hey guys, it's Liv from Live Loud, and I have a fun new idea for this channel. Um, if you haven't noticed, this channel is primarily a makeup channel right now, um, but I really wanna start um, doing my makeup while sharing true crime cases. So that's what this is, and maybe I'll come up with a fun name for it, or who knows where it's gonna go. But I wanted to try it out and see how I enjoyed it and see if you guys enjoyed it too. Okay, so I have my mirror over here and <laughs> my notes over here. So I'm gonna be flicking <laughs> back and forth. To start, this case is about a woman named Peggy Sue Case Ellsworth. Um, but she went by Peggy Sue Case um, when she disappeared. Um, she was described as a gentle, loving, and whimsical soul who would often write notes to her family. She is thoughtful with an artistic flair as described by her family. Um, she was a talented graphics arts designer and was um, at 29 years old pursuing a degree in graphic design. She was born in Payson, Utah in 1960 um, and she's survived by her father and siblings right now, unfortunately. Um, her mother lived her entire life wondering where her daughter went. So Peggy, at the time of her disappearance, was dating a man named Michael Kufrin. Um, this was not a particularly new relationship. They were living together at this time. Um, so while the relationship was not new, it also wasn't the healthiest relationship. I saw some articles say that there had been domestic violence um, reports um, and some hadn't. I couldn't find that like across the board. So you probably want to take the reports of previous domestic violence and um, more issues in their relationship that were kind of leading up to this. Um, take that with a grain of salt. Clearly things weren't the uh, most solid. <laughs> so the last time Peggy is reported to be seen was on July 9th of 1988. That was the last time it is reported that she is seen by somebody other than her boyfriend, Michael Kufrin. So they were at a hot tub party. So others at this party report that Peggy and Michael were acting really normal right up until the end. Michael Kufrin accused Peggy of flirting with other guys who were at this party. Which apparently she was friendly with these guys, but they were with like a group of friends that they all knew. But after this party, Kufrin made a phone call to Peggy's work. She worked at a um, like a shipping company. I believe it was a shipping company. Well, he called her work right after this party and said, hey, Peggy is going to be calling in sick, which, you know, what were they going to say to that? No, not allowed. I have worked places where you're not allowed to be sick. This is on the police report too, that he also told her work the very next day that she would be driving to Nevada to buy a car. So six days later, um, Peggy's coworkers get really worried about her. And Peggy's coworkers um, call the police to report her missing. So after her coworkers reported her missing, um, the police started an investigation and they spoke to Kufrin um, on the 15th. And he said the same thing. Uh, they went to the hot tub party and the next day she went to Nevada to buy that car. Um, but on her way there, she decided that she was going to visit two friends that lived in Nevada, apparently. They called these two friends. Um, and these two people had not only not seen Peggy recently, 
Um, but these two friends that Michael stated that Peggy was going to see had never even heard of Peggy. They did not know who she was. Bad cover up on Michael's part. And that's when the police kind of zeroed in on Michael a little bit more. So a few weeks after um, contacting these friends that Peggy was supposed to be seeing um, and finding out they didn't even know who Peggy was, uh, the police were getting a little suspicious of old Michael Cooper over here. Um, so they went back to um, his house and asked him again, you know, what's going on? Where's Peggy? And he was like, what do you mean? Her travel bag's right here. Like, she's back. She's just like not in the house today. She's just, you know, out and about running errands. And this was 1988. Couldn't shoot her a quick text. They just had to wait and see if they could get a hold of Peggy again. Um, and in the meantime, they got a warrant to search the property. So during the police's uh, extensive search of the property, they dug in the backyard um, and they searched the house, but they found no evidence of Peggy um, other than this travel bag. Although police did note that there were not any like cosmetics items in the bag and there was not any like hygiene stuff like toothpaste, deodorant, your toothbrush, that kind of stuff that you would bring on a trip where you're going to be gone for a while. So the police now not only don't have any evidence of Peggy but they haven't found evidence of a crime scene and the last they heard Peggy and Michael left this hot tub party both alive and Maybe there was like some tension, um, but they seemed um, normal. Um, other than, you know, a toxic marital fight. But I, that was, from what I can gather, pretty par for the course as far as their relationship goes. So two months after Peggy goes missing, um, not too much progress has been made. Again, the police don't really have uh, much to go on as far as um, clues or evidence, especially in the, in the late 80s. DNA was just starting to make its way like mainstream, um, you know, but again, they, they had no evidence of a crime scene. And so with that, the investigation kind of stalled and it would stall for almost another 30 years. So on May 22nd of 2017, the residents of 80 North and 800 East in Spanish Fork, Utah were moving out of where they lived. As they were moving out, they were moving some of their things out of the cellar that was separate from the house, but it was in the backyard. And as they were moving things out of the cellar, the uh, man who lived there noticed that there was like a depression or something like, something looked off about um, the dirt in one corner of the cellar. And having heard some rumors about uh, a few of the previous occupants of this house, um, which had been Peggy and Michael, uh, he decided that he was gonna dig it up because, I mean, I'd do the same thing. What else are you gonna do? They dug about 18 inches deep where they found a skull and a few other bones wrapped in a blanket and then wrapped in a plastic mesh. And these guys immediately called the police. So the police did whatever it is that police do at a crime scene and they, um, investigated further, they looked for more evidence, and they set, um, they sent these bones and skull off to a medical examiner to be identified. And uh, it was, uh, this body was unfortunately identified as that of Peggy's suitcase. So what happened to Peggy um, is still unknown actually. Um, on July 17th of that year, 2017, um, Kufrin was arrested in um, Illinois 
and was charged with Peggy's murder. And that October, he refused to appear at an extradition hearing um, to be sent to Utah. Um, and the second time was taken with any force necessary. And then he was extradited out to Utah. And then for his bond hearing out here in Utah, he again did the same thing. He refused to come and the judge said, you know, here's the next date, whatever is necessary, get him to court, he needs to be there. Um, and so the next hearing he was brought and his bond was set for $250,000. So he has not had his trial yet. He is scheduled to go to trial in July of this year. Um, I mean, with how things are going, who knows if that'll happen, but that is when his trial is scheduled. So that is the ongoing and unfolding story of um, Peggy Sue Case's unfortunate death. Um, I'll update you guys as this, uh, as this case goes to trial and as we learn more, there is still so much that is unknown because they haven't gone to trial yet, so the police are still keeping things closer and um, probably want to keep the defense guessing. I'm sure there will be more that comes out. Um, and I'm pretty sure Kufrin's going to be going to prison, um, likely for the rest of his life. He is 63 or 64 years old now, um, and people generally don't live older than about 72 in jail is uh, the life expectancy. So that is all for today's case. Uh, and until next time, live safe, live happy, and live loud.